Hello coaches, thanks for joining me for another week, another breakdown. Today we're going to talk about something that I get quite a few emails about, which is how to improve communication in your team. Now, there's a number of different ways you can do it. We're going to look at three different ways you can do it right away on the training pitch. If you enjoyed the video, as always, please give it a like and a subscribe below so you don't miss any more. Okay, coach communication, let's go. All right, so I think the best way to improve communication within your team during the training sessions is to be more deliberate about your objectives and your setup in the session. So we're gonna look at three different ways to do that. The first one is when you're focusing on transitions. Now transitions are a good way to challenge communication and allow communications if you give the team the setup and the organization of what you're trying to do and maybe challenge them in a little bit of organization. So I'll give you an example of that there. So this game here would be an example, plenty of transitions, lots of opportunities for teammates to communicate. Starts off as a 2v1 to goal, then becomes a 2v2, then becomes a 3v2, then becomes a 3v3, then becomes a 4v3, then becomes a 4v4. So plenty of opportunities for teammates to organise, reorganise, get players in positions, be competitive and also pass on information. Really, really good game. For the coaches maybe to step back and for the players to lead the communication process. A progression for this would be what people are communicating and getting players comfortable and confident in passing on information related to your game model, tactical information, moments of the game, giving players really, really good feedback on the pitch, live time, making a real impact. And to do that, I think it's always useful to have deliberate in trying to use specific roles in individuals and positions to try and bring out that communication in an exercise. Here's an example of that. So there's two ways to do it. One could be a specific game that allows you to communicate your principles. So defensively, this would be an easy one. Six goal game and maybe it's an opportunity for the coach to start to get players aware of how the game principles are in a session. So for this would be simple, move across, immediate pressure on the ball, and then have the defensive team on those two thirds where the ball is. Now you could say that only two players can talk or maybe only one player can give information, which would have one player challenged to shift, step, easier types of communication that can be consistent to your game model. And then another idea may be to play the exact same game, six goal game, 6v6, take two players out now, put them at the back end of the pitch and have them the only ones who can communicate. So they almost have to coach their team off the pitch so they're not really concerned about their role. They can observe, they can support, they can help players get in the right position and it's a great game to help players aware of what's going on around them and maybe take a little bit of a back seat to observe that happening. It's also a good game to keep rotating those two players and then challenge maybe a player who's maybe not so confident or maybe you want to get a little more communication from in those types of scenarios. And then the last way of trying to facilitate some communication with teammates, I think is the best way, is to play a game. Again, you can make it a tactical game. You can put some of your principles in there, but have more stoppages, short stoppages, and allow players to discuss certain aspects amongst themselves. So maybe it's a 60 second break, one team goes one direction, one team goes in the other direction, and you maybe then give someone the halftime team talk for that team, halftime team talk for the other team. You then, as a coach, can again facilitate, maybe listen, maybe see who's doing a good job, who maybe needs a little bit of help, and go through that process there, let them play again, have another break, give it to another player, and then allow players to build the habit of discussing in intervals, which can also build the relationship between units, build confidence in roles and responsibilities. There's a ton of great things that you can get from this. So there you have it, different ways to build communication processes within your training environment. As always, the key for me is to be deliberate with your planning and maybe find ways where as a coach you can step back or as a coach you can maybe challenge the organization of a session to bring out what you want. For example, the transition can flow where players have to give that communication in real time. There's an urgency with that communication. A different type of communication may be the reflection and review. There's not as much pressure on solving it within seconds, but 
those different types of conversations need to happen. Communication within a team is a range of different things. Again, some of it's real time, some of it's after, some of it's post game practices. But the more conversations that go on around a team, typically the more comfortable and confident people are with their role, their responsibility, which brings more communication. And as always, for a coach, the best thing is is for those players to have it amongst themselves. And then with you, you can get feedback, you can gauge understanding, and then you can go back to the drawing board and you can help your design to maybe use a little bit of this, a little less of that, and everything works together. As always, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy it. Please give it a like below. Please subscribe so you don't miss any more. And please check out all the new stuff, a lot of free content over at modernsoccercoach.com. Really appreciate the support. See you next week. Goodbye.